It's time guys, it is the first day of harvest and we are gonna get rolling on soybeans. Got the combine all ready to go, besides it's got the corn header on. We'll take that off quick when we rode it. We pretty much got everything ready to go besides for the only thing I forgot is the wagons back here. Wagons need air tires checked and then need some grease quick. So in case you guys are new, to run you guys through, this is my third harvest ever. I started in 2021, this is gonna be, this is 2023, this is gonna be my third harvest. So I'm kind of getting used to things, things are going. Now for Spencer, Spencer has 40, we'll call it 50 acres, about 80 miles north of here. And that's kind of where we wanna eventually farm. And so um, for Spencer, this is gonna be his first harvest. And I think so far the plan is we're gonna go harvest his corn crop. We're gonna find a way to harvest it, um, get it harvested, and some things are gonna happen kind of, you guys will see later in this video that are kind of transitioning the farm a little bit. Not from generation to generation, but transitioning from a different area to another different area. So, yeah. These are heavy. They weigh about like 8,000 pounds each, but they, once you get them going, they don't stop, it seems like. If I remember correctly, we usually shoot for 85, 90 pounds on these things. It's kind of a balance because at least from what I've read is if you go too high up PSI on these tires, then sometimes you get these rims that'll crack. If you go too soft, well then they're kind of bouncing all over the place and then you could blow a tire if you're too soft. So, whew, that shows 140, no way. Okay, so we're right about 90 there, so that one's good to go. And these are actually just old truck tires on these wagons. So if you get a flat, it's kind of nice. I just take it to my Firestone guy. He's got a bunch of old truck tires and we just toss one on and then just replace it. So it's fairly easy to find truck tires around here. A little over 90, should be good. We need to get this hammer strap off the uh, tractor because the way the wagons mount on the tractor, you can't have this hammer strap here. Smooth. Spence is probably gonna need some of these keys. They always come out. Seems like we're always losing them, so it's better just to start off the year and throw a couple up here in case he loses them. Okay, it is finally time. We are gonna get rolling. I'm gonna put, that's a header manual, I might need that. And then we're gonna put the combine manual. It kinda sucks. At some point I ripped off the front of this. Combine manual. There we go, a nice spot for the combine manual. Should always stay there. It always ends up in my truck. I think Spencer pulled this out this morning. He actually slept here overnight. So I think he, I don't think he left it outside. I think he pulled it out, so it should be warm. We'll see. Just gonna put this corn head inside real quick and we'll be on the road. And I think my dad's coming down later today so he'll bring the truck down so we'll have something at the farm if we have to run and grab parts or something like that so I shouldn't even mention this but last year what was it you guys probably remember we were averaging about 10 acres per breakdown and the breakdowns usually took us like two or three hours to fix by the time you run and grab parts so hopefully it's not as bad this year. Okay, we are rolling. As far as bean yield here, oh, I don't know. The thing is, we have so many trees around the edges on this farm, so it just cuts yield. We'll probably get some 80 bushel beans through the middle, I betcha, but then it'll be 30 bushel on the edges, so. We'll shift her in the third gear. Let it roll. Hazards on, should be good. She's a little close, but I think we can make her without running over the corn. Gosh darn it! Holy! Slow! 
slugged her the first pass in. There was so much grass, it just got all wound up there. Okay, we did about an acre. I'm seeing for a uh, sample, it's actually, it's actually not too bad. There's actually a lot of there's a lot of crickets in there. I'm seeing like 10 different crickets in there. We're looking pretty good. You're gonna have those green pods and stuff. It's not terrible. We could uh, tweak it though. What are you seeing? I would say you gotta give yourself one to two for header loss, you know, pretty consistent. One, two, maybe you count three there. There's some beans I didn't even get. Yeah. Two to three for just now. So here we're just checking our header loss because this stuff didn't come out the back yet. And we're seeing about like how many beans on the header loss? Two. See two about two on the header loss. So then we'll figure out how much are we getting coming out the back of the combine. This is his uh, feet measuring sticks right here. Three to four there. All these beans that are coming out the back are small beans, yeah. which means I probably have my fan too high. I could probably lower it and we may be blowing beans out the back. Okay, we did a little bit of adjusting. I opened up the chaffer a little more. Maybe that'll help. I'm gonna lower the fan speed a little bit. We're gonna see what we can do. It's not the complete, it's not too bad a sample. So I got John, Pioneer Seed Salesman here. He brought a way wagon, a seat tender. He's got a scale on there. So we're gonna see how accurate my yield monitor is so that we can get it dialed in. So I'm gonna dump onto him here. And then he's gonna dump onto Spencer after we get the weight. And then we'll do like two or three rounds of this just to make sure we got this yield monitor dialed in. On that one, we were off by 50 pounds, literally a bushel. So less than a bushel. So we're gonna do it one or two more times. Should have our first wagon full here. He's taking off, he should have 34,000, something like that in there. Okay, so I think I was trying to explain this while we were dialing in the yield monitor, but this farm is the first farm I ever bought. And as of like, three or four days ago, it is not mine anymore. So I sold this and the guy I sold it to was actually just here, brought the uh, way wagon, John. So John, the pioneer seed salesman, he bought this farm from me. Um, and so I sold this three or four days ago. And then a day after I sold it, I went in 1031 exchange or bought a different farm, like really close to Spencer's farm. So it's, uh, it's really close back home and it's kind of where we want to start farming area we want to start farming so this was 120 acres i 1031 exchanged it for 45 acres um closer to spencer so and then this was only uh like 40 tailable but there's 120 acres total because there's a lot of like timber and stuff like that so 1031 exchange basically just gets you out of having to pay capital long-term capital gains tax um which would have been 20 percent tax on the uh, net gain there so it worked out pretty good so once I get this bean crop off of this ground, this is John's, he's gonna do his thing. So it's kind of bittersweet, but that was the kind of long-term plan, honestly, um, was this way. It's just happening a little, just I'd say a couple years faster than I thought it would, so, which is good. Checking knives, seeing if we have any broken, we're good. I will show you guys though, uh, the new farm, once we get to it, it's actually, it's, it's gonna be pretty cool how it works out because it's literally next to Spencer's and we're gonna pull out the fence and combine combine the farm. So it worked out, uh, worked pretty good. Oh, we're 
and what's nice is uh, last year the beans were like 9%. They would be green and they'd still be 9%. Um, they are flaying all over. This year, they're actually perfect between 13 and 14%. And uh, they're not flicking all over the cab and stuff um, because I think they're just the perfect moisture and they just stay in the pod pretty well. Um, and they're threshing good too. We're not having any issues threshing them. So it's kind of working out good. mission fit a 25 foot head down this pathway now i was able to do it in the past but the new owner doesn't seem to take care of this place too much and i can't get through here come on john what the heck is this now nah, we should be good there we go okay this should be the last load for the night and then we're going to fill wagons overnight and see how it goes. There's a couple. This is so sketchy. This is so hard on the wagons. Oh, he is spinning. Those wagons, they get so top heavy. You're going down like a side slope like this and it's just bouncing over the side. It's the next morning now and it is gloomy. It is like, believe it or not, like 10 o'clock and it's been foggy all morning and the fog just cleared. So it's probably not gonna be till noon till we can even get started here. We have one completely full wagon and the plan was to fill the other wagon with like 400 bushels because that's all we have left on this field but then we'd have to come back for the header cart so i'm going to take one wagon in and then drop the wagon off at the shed and then we'll fill 400 bushels in that wagon and then hook the header in the cart to the back of that wagon and get everything out of here all at once that's the plan i'm gonna get the tractor started up we'll check the oil quick <laughs> I don't think this wagon's gonna roll on me, but uh, just in case, we'll we'll set that there. So while I was waiting for the tractor warm up, I was testing American farming. We are currently in hardcore beta testing mode right now, which means I need to spend as much time as possible finding all the bugs and same with all the other beta testers. Figured I'd give you guys a little sneak peek. There we go. And while that's happening, Okay, we should be good to go. Tractor should be warm. I wanted to let it warm up more because we're gonna go straight into pulling on the road and I want that tractor warm. And that was American Farming. So that's the game I've been working on for three years. Me and a team of eight different people. I mean, there's a lot of full-time guys on there too, working on making this thing great. We have like 40 beta testers right now trying to get all the bugs. So once we launch this thing, it's solid. There's gonna be some a couple bugs, I can guarantee. You just can't find them all, but we want to launch this game solid and come out strong. We got Spencer's military truck up and going. He wanted to use it here, so we had a long drive down here anyways, so hooked that military truck up and uh, we're gonna get combined. Sun finally came out. We 
are rolling. This should be the last wagon of the field here on soybeans. This is a 3840 acre field. Brought the military truck down, and then we're gonna pull the the we're gonna pull the header home too at the same time. So it's actually a it's like 25 mile round trip. Got Spencer moving out with the military truck. I think we got like four on bushel on them, and then we got the header. The wagons work good for hauling that pulling the header along too. There we go. Everybody's out harvesting today. It seems like we got Spence chugging up there. Got a lot of traffic around here. So we switched to a different farm. We're in a rush because I gotta go to a meeting in an hour, but I really wanted to get on these beans. Um, and they were some really good beans. So I, this was corn on corn last year. So you kind of get a little bit of yield bump there. And then I put uh, sulfur on them. Um, so AMS, I have a trial out there that we're gonna test. And then we also had fungicide and we also had source on them. We don't have any test strips for the source or fungicide, unfortunately, but uh, so we kind of, we can, kind of threw a lot of this uh, at these beans, so it'll be interesting to see what they yield here. So that's what I'm excited for. We've got some good spots, and we're just knocking out the end rows here. Okay, so we're doing our AMS uh, trial. We're doing the non-AMS pass now, and we'll reset the load, do the AMS pass, see what we get, and then on climate, I'll also be able to like run the data on my computer and see what the yield difference is. So I forgot how many bushels it takes to pay for this. It probably doesn't pay, but It'll be interesting to see. Okay, so I'm gonna I wanna leave like two rows of that off of that flag. Yep, yep, you go straight. Second? Yep. Okay, did that too really? Okay, so our non-sulfur strip went to 83 bushel an acre and currently our sulfur strip AMS in season applied or in crop applied is at 82.5. We're getting to our better ground down here. I think it's gonna beat it, but I'm pretty sure I gotta do the math, but it's gotta beat it by like three or four bushel for it to actually pay. So we'll see. Right now it's running 83.2. So currently it has it beat on this strip. And this is the, the strip that had sulfur. Okay, so 88.7. The other one was 82.7. 82.7? Is that six bushel difference? 82.7 right there. Okay, Spence is gonna get her all dumped and he's gonna finish up. He's gonna do a couple more passes to get a wagon full. And uh, I gotta get going here. I'm actually gonna be late for a meeting. But, uh, so I think sulfur strip uh, with AMS in season, uh, June 15th, went um, 87.6 bushels per acre. And then the non-sulfur AMS strip went, uh, what would have been? Or no, it went 88.6, and then the non-sulfur went 82.6. It was exactly like a six bushel difference um, between there. So that is, uh, that's like really good. That's really good. So that had fungicide, it had source on it, it had everything. So. so real quick guys, I only saw that six bushel advantage on one strip. I had another strip on the same lighter dirt, kind of a little bit lower CEC dirt that only was a three bushel advantage. And then on my heavy dirt, my high CEC, heavy black dirt, um, the sulfur strip, the non-sulfur strip was standing straight up. All the beans were standing straight up. The sulfur strip, all the beans were laid over. And so, which, which is good, but when it came to final yield, the non-sulfur strip actually ended up yielding more than the sulfur strip on the heavy CEC ground, on the heavy ground. So just a little bit of clarification there. Okay, it is the next day now. We're getting the combine fired up here. I thought I was actually gonna end this video 
yesterday, but I was like, we need to get these beans out because it's going to get hot this weekend and it's going to dry them out. And so the beans tested 14.3, the load Spencer brought in. It's a little 13's market price. It's over there. I'd rather harvest beans at 14.1, 14, 14 than 8 or 9, which it'll probably get to that this weekend. So we're going to keep running here. I got the oil checked, rock trap dumped, and, uh, and then we're going to clean off this combine quick and then get rolling. And I know, I know, you guys are going to say, Grant, you need to do this at the end of the day. Yesterday, I was in a rush. I had to get home. We're doing it now at the start of the day. And it's actually, it's actually 2 o'clock. It was really cloudy all morning. The past three days, we've been cutting beans. It's been cloudy all morning till like 1 or 2 o'clock. And then the sun finally comes out. We got a few broken sickles that we need to uh, change out real quick. Should, be Should we switch out any others or no? These, these Pioneer beans are good, like really good, but man, they get knocked over and they get kind of tough. They are tough combine through here. This is a 2.8 bean, uh, 2.8 A65B, so it's their uh, Pioneer's A series. And uh, they always, on 30 inch rows, they get real tall and they seem to, I seem to have bad luck where a lot of my beans get knocked over and it's usually in the good spots uh, where the beans are yielding really good is when they seem to go over. But they're going through, they're chugging through. Well guys, that's going to be the end of it. As an update, the beans on this farm ended up doing 76 bushels an acre. So once you add up all the end rows and stuff where you get to like 40 bushel beans because of all the trees, it lowers the yield average. But that's my best bean yield I've ever had so far out of my first three years farming. So pretty happy with it. So we're on to corn now and we'll see how that goes. Stay tuned for next video. Thanks guys.